meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything, any amendments or anything that needs to be added? So Kirk's here and um, I actually saw Kirk out running and on my way home and I was like, oh, I didn't put him on the agenda. So we'll just pick him up under public comment, Chris. So sorry, Kirk, that was my bad. But I saw you out running and I was like, oh, there he is, dang. <laughs> so he can just go under public comment since you don't have any minutes. Uh, uh, appointments, I mean. Okay, anything else? Not that I'm aware of. Nope. Move to accept the agenda as written. Second. You're muted, Chris. We have to work on our signs. <laughs> All right. So we have uh, first up is public comment. So if there is, there's anything that's not on the current agenda that anybody would like to bring up, now is the time. And then after that, then I'll let Kurt speak for a little bit. So is anybody, uh, Thomas or Leonard? Yep. Yes. Um, I want to bring up the idea of, of focusing a little bit more on Bethel's school and bringing that into the meeting. Um, I did some light research and academically in their achievement test, Bethel was at the lowest part of the spectrum. They're ranked really low. Um, I want to know what we can do for the community to help them, to assist them. Um, and, you know, when we did the voting, I saw all the things we were actually voting on. It really sort of pointed out to me how much the town votes for that school for their budget. Um, and for me, I want the school to perform as well as can be. And they're really in a low percentage. I wonder if you put that on the agenda and start talking about that and seeing what we can do as a town, as a community, as individuals to, to help them improve in their math and reading skills. So what I, was that last thing you said, Leonard? Uh, to help them you know what we can do as a community. Um, I don't have children in the school, but my taxes go to the school. I have a vested interest in the school. Um, so I want to know how we can help them to improve their scores. Um, their test scores are really low. They're at the bottom of the ranking. The right, but you said you said something about the uh, school meetings. No, I'm talking about us. Like what? I don't know. Right, what, right, right. What role the uh, okay. select board plays in talking to them? I don't know any, but I'd like to find that information out. So I was hoping we could put that on a future agenda so that we can really a lot of time for it. Can I address that, Chris? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> having served on the school board 13 years, uh, I don't know that uh, we as a select board ha have the expertise that the school board and their administrators would have. I, I would I guess I would suggest that you maybe approach the new superintendent, Jamie Canarney, and uh, express your concern and ask him if he's got something on it, you know, going on, because I know he's working really hard through this COVID thing. I've had a chance to talk to him and uh, I'm surprised, or I'm, I'm saddened that we are so low because at one time, three, four years ago, we were at least in the mid range of this test scores. So I don't know if that's a COVID related item or, or a instructional related item or whatever it could be, but I would, I don't want us to not do anything, but I think that there's more could be done in the educational field first. And then maybe they have something they need that we could help them with. But I would, I would want to hear that from them. Sounds good. Um, the scores I saw go back beyond 
COVID. Okay. Also a little while. So that's that's really the concern. You know, if it was just this COVID year, that would be an anomaly. But my concern is that, you know, for a few years, it's been this year. Um, so in talking to them, maybe we can find a way to help, to help that we can get, you know, parents involved, more parents involved, or whatever we can do to make it better for the children here. So that that's all I want. And that's been a that's been an issue for 15 years of my yeah. working with them is getting parents involved is uh, is a quite a task. Mm -hmm. There are some that are right there. There are some that are there sometimes, and there's some that are very difficult to find. Right. Right. Just want to remind people, it sounds like we got a little bit of sanding going in the background. So I know. I'm not sure. Sometimes we get feedback from different people. <laughs> so I mute them on my end. So if okay. I'm here, become muted. It's because I'm trying to kill the feedback. But I see Lisa has her. Um, yes, Lisa. Hey there. Um, as someone who's worked under Jamie Canarney Leonard, I think you'll find him very receptive and very willing to hear your concerns and um, yeah, I think that's a worthwhile phone call to make and just touch base with him and find out what his thoughts are. And I think he would probably be very receptive to any kind of support you would be willing to provide, but he's, he's a pretty open guy. He knows his numbers, he, his data, he knows his data. So um, it should be a pretty fruitful conversation for you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, and I'll say just, you know, my only input in, I, I think I agree with Dave, you know, I, I don't know what the select board really could do at our level. Um, but, um, you know, Jeremy, uh, Jamie, sorry, Jamie's come into it with, you know, um, you know, open mind. Um, he's looking at things different over there. Um, I will say having to, you know, have put one through school and two are in school now that you know, the test scores aren't always, um, you know, the perfect uh, example of how well kids are doing in school. I have one daughter myself <clears throat> in the elementary school who, who is very bright, but when it comes to taking tests it is not pretty. So, um, you know, so some kids have anxiety when taking tests and things like that, but. I'll say I'm aware of that, um, but I think, um... One of the things I'm learning from people who, who have children here is that that's what they look at when they're thinking about moving here, when they're thinking about staying here. Um, so that's what they have. I mean, before they get to this community, they're going to be looking at that. Um, so we, any way we can improve that will be better for the town in general. Um, sure. Now, I know if the test scores were higher, I would assume that that's what part of what they would be promoting is that they have this, these high test scores. So let's, I'm thinking in my mind, let's get them higher so you can promote that. Um, if the kids have a testing issue, well, maybe that's where we go. We teach them how to take tests. Sure. Because, you know, these tests have been given. I took these tests when I was a kid. You know, I had to take the reading test every year. So it's nothing new, these tests. Um, it's just a matter of making sure they are proficient in these tests and not just proficient in that, but proficient in taking the test. So that's something I'm, yeah, just just whatever we can do to help. You know, that's where I'm coming from. And I mean, we I can mean, do to help. I mean, how, how we got, uh, how it got our attention is that our neighbors who have two young kids, uh, one of them will be in elementary school in two years. They were looking at the at the scores and everything, and they are now thinking about moving away from Bethel because they think the scores are too low. And so that's how we got this whole thing rolling. And as we started to do some research and stuff like that, so sure. Yeah, well, thank you for bringing that up. I'll uh, I'll reach out to Jamie um, with that as well, and I'll, I'll I'll do some due diligence on looking at what the the newest um, testing scores have been and and uh, have a conversation with them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comment before we go to Kurt? So floor is yours, Kurt. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, uh, I'm 
mostly I'm just stopping by to to say hi, see if there are things that you all have concerns you'd like me to look into. Um, we are uh, right now full into uh, what they call the crossover period where uh, some of the really big bills have to get done in order to pass over to the other chamber uh, in time for them to work on them. And we have um, a number of big bills coming along. We process some some moderate size bills. Uh, big ones coming through. I'm thinking about stuff that pertains to the uh, might pertain to the town. Uh, I know that uh, uh, I think tomorrow they'll be probably voting on a bill about uh, kind of uh, making more permanent the idea of takeout uh, alcoholic beverages and pre-prepared kind of uh, drinks and those kind of things. Uh, so there's going to be a bill on that. Uh, also, probably tomorrow will be the um, the big bill that they've been working on uh, for accelerated community broadband deployment, uh, which is really uh, uh, putting a lot of a lot of uh, structures in place for uh, various levels of development grants and loans, uh, and and some of that is all tied into the money they're expecting to get from the from the federal government on that, um, and so uh, they're in the process of creating. Uh, uh, different programs for each of the levels that a development. Uh, would go through. So, you know, there's the there's the pre-development stage where you do research on where the poles are and how many poles you need and and all that stuff. And that um, and then and then uh, and that would be absolutely grants. And then once some poles and things have been put in, and they can start to uh, uh, get customers and generate income back uh, in places around the state, then they may turn that back into a loan and try and set up some kind of a revolving loan um, uh, so that money doesn't just disappear, but it kind of keeps keeps returning. Uh, but no, almost none of that, I mean, some of that has impact on us, but uh, our uh, community, uh, Communications uh, Unified District is already EC Fiber. And so it would be in place to try and help EC Fiber get to the end of the ends of the roads, basically, uh, for our district. So that's coming through. Uh, probably not tomorrow, probably the day after tomorrow. Uh, well, tomorrow actually will probably be uh, a whole lot of uh, discussion around the transportation bill uh, and uh, and that's that's a big one and of course that will certainly impact uh, our towns because that's where the money you know that's where the money is for uh, appropriations for all the roads and things and as I think uh, Therese can can verify from her understanding that they're, they're planning on putting quite a lot of money into into those kind of things and I know Bethel had some projects that you're hoping to get some money and so uh, you know hopefully that's this is an encouraging uh, piece of that uh, so uh, so that that will be um, it's a really big uh, piece of legislation uh, we've been we've been told that this week um, Make no plans in the evenings. Uh, you know, we, we've been told that that it's entirely possible we'll be in meetings till ten or eleven at night. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, uh, but um, and then on Wednesday, uh, uh, there's some bills around. Medicaid and stuff like that, but the big one, uh, oh, there's a registration. They're talking about registration for construction contractors who are doing jobs over 25,000, I believe, uh, and uh, uh, that people have to register. Um, and that, that's a pretty, there's a lot of controversy around that bill. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, for me, the, the big, big thing excitement for this coming week is uh, you may recall Bethel participated in the better block project uh, and uh, uh, and so the state is creating its uh, a version that can roll out for communities around the state called the better places program and um, the uh, committee on uh, commerce and economic development is the one that's 
responsible for that. That's the committee I'm on. And since I come from Bethel, uh, I, I have the, the honor and distinction of presenting that part of the bill uh, to the floor. It'll be my first uh, uh, presentation of bill on the floor. And uh, so I'm a little nervous, but I hope it, I, I'm sure it'll go fine, but you know, a little bit nervous about you know, people questioning things and not having all the facts I need to have. I have, I have piles of them, but you know, uh, <laughs> they tell me that, that if you, if you're really heavily prepared, no one will ask you a question. Uh, if you, if you uh, think you know it all, but you don't, then someone's going to find that thing. So I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, but those are some of the big things that are coming around. Uh, anything you've heard about that you're concerned with or have thoughts around? I mean, there's a, at this point there, it's just a, you know, wave after wave of bills that are starting to come out of committee. Um, and so, I mean, I, I didn't list all, you know, 40 of them or two year or whatever. Uh, so. <laughs> There's been some information about the, you know, con or big numbers keep changing about how much money municipalities are going to get yeah. through this program. At first I heard Bethel, the first email out with the spreadsheet was like 0.19 million for Bethel, now we're down to $99 per capita, which is for 2,030 people. So wow. yeah. all over the map. So, and anything I've read about that, because we've been dealing with Two Rivers about another program, I think that while we're going to see money, it's going to be really tied up in, um, you know, the U.S. Treasury is not just going to be handing it out and letting us make choices. I yeah. think it's going to be really tied up with, um, whether it's some municipalities have lost money during COVID, whether it was collections or they've waived payments yeah. and interest and penalties and yeah. things like that. So um, what I'm hoping is that we yeah. see that maybe it's that, but also earmarked for infrastructure because infrastructure issues we got. And yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it'll be interesting to see. But uh, have you heard any? I, I haven't. I mean, uh, you know, the big thing, pretty much everything everyone says about any of these bills that are relying on on federal money is 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 we we're, we're making plans because we have to because we can't wait until the money shows up to make them but 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 the the feds haven't really defined what any of those strings are we know there will be strings we just don't know what they will be just like for example uh with that broadband bill i was talking about uh uh it's set up as a grant and possibly a loan. And the, why I say possibly a loan is because they don't know if the feds will allow them to do it as a loan or whether it just has to be a grant. Or if they allow it to be a loan, will they allow it to be a revolving loan or does the money from the loan just have to go back to the feds? In which case, you know, so, so they don't really know. Um, I, I'm, I don't uh, envy the people on, on uh, uh, ways and means and appropriations, those, those two committees, because yeah, you know, they're they're working with with fluid yeah. situations. Yeah, so. definitely a lot of unknowns. I had heard about the transportation bill that it looked like they were trying to um, maybe give the VTrans some more money to fund back grants because we do have back stuff in the pipeline. I just resubmitted a resubmitted a grant from last year for them, and then I did reach out to a gentleman at VTrans about our transportation alternatives project and. They had said mid, you know, mid March or early March, and I emailed them, and I haven't heard back. So I figured he's doing what we're doing, which is waiting for yeah. it to pass, and then, and then it'll pass, and then when they need a few days to sugar it out, figure out how they're going to spend the money. So, yeah. Yeah. fingers go crossed. Ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Do you have something? Yeah, uh, correct. So yeah. listening to the governor at his his pre you know, press conferences there, yeah, he's uh, kind of hesitant. Uh, when asked questions about the bills that are being talked about uh, concerning, you know, spending money that we don't have yet and, and spending the money on projects that require long-term investment as opposed to one-shot deal, um, you know, repairs and things like that. How's that going over with, uh, with your counterparts, you and your counterparts there? Um, uh, I mean, First of all, most of those bills haven't been passed yet, um, so uh, so they're still being kind of debated, and those questions come up um, about you know uh, it the the 
governor certainly you know has been uh, strongly emphasizing that that if you're getting one-time money it should go toward one-time projects um having said that he also his his a number of members of his department uh uh came to my committee and and said we have this really big one-time project and yeah okay it might go for several years and yes there will be ongoing maintenance that'll be required but 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 that doesn't really count. Um, so, you know, everybody, everybody hedges. Um, but, um, uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, I, I have not seen very many bills yet that have come to a floor vote uh, that are, that have those kinds of things in them, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see some before too long. Uh, but most of the bills we've seen so far, so far have been, haven't really had a lot of ongoing expenditure. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, like a, a big bill that was heavily debated last Friday was the uh, ability of farmers to sell raw milk uh, at, uh, you know, at, at other like farm stands, not aren't their own farm stands and stuff like that. That was a big, big debate. Uh, and uh, and I think there is a, I think they set up a, there's a small commission or something that kind of keeps an eye on that to make sure it goes okay. That would probably be an expenditure that would come out of the general fund. Um, so. I know um, one thing, Kurt, that, you know, uh, I know there's a lot of things that come to mind um, you know, that Bethel could use or need, but, um, you know, driving around with trees, we were looking at roads, uh, Friday, I think it was, and it was really nice outside. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also were noticing the, the large pieces of concrete wall that's flaking off onto the ground again. So off oh, from our wall. Yeah. From our fish wall. So, you know, and I know we've reached out to, uh, the agency of transportation in regards to getting that, you know, out there to be fixed and, you know, I, you know, from what we understand that for most part, the wall is sound. This is mostly cosmetic. However, I mean, at some point, this wall is going to need <clears throat> repair. And I mean, is there any way of, you know, maybe bringing that up to somebody at your level on at least getting it like put out there on a plan, you know, even if it's 10 years yeah. out, something like, because, I mean, you look at it and, you know, the rails up top, you know, yeah. I mean, the, the whole thing is. Yeah really yeah. fast repair and i know the fish was a, right. a good you know articulate uh item to put up there and kind of at the same time kind of makes fun of the state a little bit like if it's going to be an ugly wall we're putting fish on it type deal yeah yeah you know but it's kind of like you know at some point we really got to do something with that wall you know well, yeah exactly and i mean in back when you know bri was working on the fish thing i mean that was the the i mean yeah, we were we went through all that with them, and um, and I don't know if you remember, but we had a little campaign where we for Christmas where we had uh, uh, people posting all I want for Christmas is for VTrans to fix our wall, uh, yeah. and uh, um, just trying to get get their attention because uh, lots of times it's it's attention, and and yes, what they told us was that you know you get in a couple inches into the wall and it's it's sturdy it's just the sort of the the coating on the outside and, and they told us at that time not to expect any major improvements on that wall for for quite a while but i remember and, and dave probably remembers this i mean this was i mean that wall has been there have been times when suddenly we were told in the town that it was uh you know okay it's number 10 on the list and then well now it's number 46 on the list and now it's you know uh all kind of depends on uh, other projects with more priority uh but yeah i mean i could certainly contact somebody at vtrans to say is it on the list um mm. you know and uh, uh but i think that you know and this is you know what happens, I think, as I'm watching kind of the way economic development and all that stuff unfolds is that really it's one of those cases where if it looks like you care and you're doing stuff, then that gets their attention. And if you don't look like you care, then they don't care either too much as long as it's not dangerous. And so um, 
so you know that's why you know putting the fish on the wall keeps keeps Bethel in their head you know uh all the things that Bethel can do to keep kind of getting grants and moving forward and developing ourselves tells them that we want to make we, we want to make changes improve things and 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 that just kind of keeps us in their mind and and that that I think improves our your your standing a little bit because out of sight out of mind I think that there's a certain little bit of that that goes on all right well we'll have the protests up at your house later on that that's great that, that's good i have i have 50 acres it's fine <laughs> it is on the list and the last time i saw it which was recently out of two rivers the transportation committee it's uh, it says after 2025 yeah it has a million plus project you know yeah yeah i i remember going to a meeting when we lived on river street back in the early 90s where it was going to be the river street bridge the t intersection and the wall were going to be it was coming up it was getting close to the top and it was going to be a temporary bridge going from the end of graham street over up behind piney monuments yeah. and, and it was a they showed us drawings and and everything and then it kind of fell right off <laughs> it fell off the charts <laughs> yeah pretty yeah. quick yeah so it's out there it just has a big price tag and yeah. i emailed them when i like one a property went up <clears throat> behind the wall they bought one but not the other but i do tell them about it and i i poke chris bump um, yeah. he trans about it so but it's on the list it's just you know it's a big oh. project for them and they say the same thing they still saying the same thing maybe yeah. the facade looks yucky but it's still solid so. yeah and and i think the one of the hardest parts of the whole thing is actually the part right across from a mascoma bank uh because because uh, i was talking with them because you've got the bridge ends you have a telephone pole that's got to get moved uh you have a collapsing cement wall that's holding up what i don't know goons you still in that house up there uh and so so all that would have to be redone you know and not have the house fall into the road and all that stuff and so so that's the that's the part of the of the project that is the engineering nightmare for them uh because there's also a drain there, if I remember. Uh, so, you know, it's an intersection of a whole bunch of things. And I wonder if they'll tear it out in the house that they bought, because they bought one up there. I wonder if they'll tear it down. But I don't know. All I saw last schedule, I saw this last week was us. It just says after 2020. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, hey, we're still there. I'm just yeah. going to take a minute. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Dave. Kirk, are you have you heard anything in uh, Montpelier about the uh, the state following the feds on uh, forgiving taxes on last year's unemployment? You know, there is all sorts of confusion discussion about that. I just got over the weekend several emails with different people talking about because because yes, the state does not nat doesn't automatically follow the feds on that uh and there was some question apparently whether or not we automatically did or we automatically didn't and we don't uh, latest thing i've heard is we don't automatically follow it and so so there would have to be legislation to say that we are going to and they're but and they're trying to get that worked out because right you know people are trying to do their taxes and and you don't know if you can if it's taxable or not and that's uh uh but yeah that's a problem and so i i don't I have not heard exactly that's in ways and means I believe and uh um and I don't know where they've where they've fallen on that that, that was the big that was the big uh, stir up of emails over the weekend was around that yeah the, the well, state disconnected to... from the federal uh, guidelines there a number of years ago and it's also creating additional work for the tax preparers yeah. Because if you file your taxes, then we're going to have to go back and do amended returns and things like that, that mm -hmm. they may not necessarily get compensated for too. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to keep having these conversations. I kind of wish that COVID wasn't happening so we could have those, uh, you know, the legislative breakfast. So, so we, people could get a lot of these questions answered or, or at the very least, I could tell you I don't know the answer, but I'll go get it for you, because uh, there's still a lot I don't know, um, and, uh, and there's still a lot 
of things. You know, when you're in your committee, you you don't always know what all the committees are exactly working on. Um, and sometimes you hear one thing and then something else comes out of the committee and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting process. Well, we appreciate you keep checking in with us, Kurt. And, and I would say at any time, if there's something that maybe catches your eye at the higher level that maybe we need to know about or trees, yeah. feel free to reach, us, read out, reach out to us at any point. And, yeah. Yeah. and absolutely. absolutely. We'll, we'll try to, we'll try to only bug you with, uh, you know, the bigger stuff. I mean, there's probably a million things we could, you know, bug you with daily, but. Yeah. I mean, you know, as, as a town, you, you have certain ones, but as, as individuals, if there's stuff that bugs you too, I mean, yeah, you, know, you can reach out as. Sure. As Chris, as opposed to select board chair uh, and uh, happy to do what I can to answer questions or get answers or, and like I said, especially when it comes to things that are related to the feds right now, it's, it's, they're, they're operating on their best hunches, but but mm. that's really all they all they have. All right. Well, I okay. appreciate your time, Kurt. All right. Have have a good rest of your meeting. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Kurt. So, Chris, we're gonna table um, the outside consumption permit for babes. They, yeah, I, I figured um, that. Yeah, I wanted to leave it on the agenda for them, um, you know, just in yep. case they pulled something together at the last minute, but um, he didn't. The, the only thing I just wanted to add is I, and, and the members can correct me if I was wrong, but what we are looking for when they do come back with, I call it an amended permit or whatever, is that to provide, um, there were a few questions that we had. One was how, how would they designate the area? Yep. Uh, and two, then we talked about some hours of service. Yep. And he also talked about materials that they're going to use. Yeah. Well, some of so, it's going to be squared away through the liquor inspector. He was meeting with Pat, mm -hmm. who's the local liquor inspector for um, Bethel, and he had his own concerns about it. So I last time exchanged an email or. And the one that comes to mind when we talk about the outside consumption permit, which, you know, at the time, you know, when Tessie's Tavern went through it, we didn't really think yeah. of it until we started to get some complaints on, you know, certain festivities that were happening there. So in yeah. this one, currently it's, um, you know, 12, you know, noon to midnight. So um, we'll talk right. a little bit about it because mm. um, and he knows that we had talked to him a little bit about it before and right. I mentioned it again. And, and the, the other thing was the permit that they submitted originally wasn't complete because by law, they needed to tell you what the materials were going to be. And they obviously mm -hmm. wanted a bigger dimension than I think the liquor control is going to give them. So. Okay. Well, when I saw what was in our packet, I figured that we weren't going to be compared to, uh, prepared to act on it because I didn't see all that. So no, I was, I just wanted to give them the opportunity if they wanted to, you know, if they came up with information, but so now he knows it will be April. So. Okay. Um, and especially now that the governor's relaxed COVID restrictions a little bit for bars, I figured, you know, they'll probably be ready in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Come back. And just a comment on um, sort of following up on what Chris was just saying, because it after last meeting, I was thinking about it um, because we, you know, Chris, I think had been the one that brought up the DRB and the, the noise complaints with Tessie's Tavern. And it sort of made me think that uh, Owen had made a point, you know, that there have been no complaints up to now, except as as it is now, their their noise would be aiming out the back towards the river where there are no residences. Whereas if they're really looking at the front side of the building, they're now aiming any noise in a really different direction, which does have a lot of residents. And so, just something that um, I don't know, you know, it might not be something we need to even address right now. But if it kind of comes up, is that something that goes immediately to the DRB before it becomes an issue, or you know, how do we how do we kind of get ahead of it becoming an issue, I guess, is where I was going with that. Cause I think it's a different setup than what they've had. And so it might be a different set of scenarios that play out from here. I'll have to look at the zoning issue and see what, if it's an issue at all. I'll double check the, um, cause they're in the course. So I'll have to read, re look at it. Um, so I just made myself a note. So, um, but it sounds like hopefully when we could meet in two weeks that we'll, you know, have more information from them and they'll have, some information from liquor control so that then they you know even know what they're looking for and if legislation is going to make things easier for them for takeout drinks then you know 
they may not even know today exactly what they need. So we'll find out. Okay. But thank you. I made a note, Lindley. Zoning permit. Yeah, there may be lighting issues too, uh, as it well as noise. If it goes through conditional use or not. The core. Yeah, it has to go through DRB. Yeah. If, if it goes through DRB, then that may come into play. But um, so we'll see. I'll double check. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have an appointment for David Fair to the Recreation Committee. Yep, he has a letter. Um, he has an email in his in the packet, and Ellie had approached him and um, to see. And I and I, he also had attended as a, a recreation committee meeting yeah. and had you know yeah, he, an offer and and uh, yeah so, he's, so. he's yeah he's attended a couple of them um, um, January and February. And he started um, helping with some of the uh, things um, that um, that we brought up uh, that needed some help at the ice skating rink. And uh, and 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 I I I first met him when he was four years old, and when I was running a daycare center in South Royalton, and I've known him even through his teenage years. So he's my neighbor now, and and. Um, across the street where Greg used to live. And um, so he, he would be, he, he, he's um, volunteered in even um, um, some stuff from work, his, where he works and stuff. So, so it would be a really good asset. Um, okay. And we're excited about him and joining the committee. All right. And then uh, once uh, this person is appointed, what, what would your committee be up for size now, Ellie? Um, nine. Nine members. And all those members are still pretty active? Yes, um, they've been shoveling um, the ice skating rink, taking turns. Um, they've put um, input in about um, our new, and they uh, did you want to um, talk about a, a sign that we need? And they, um, they had some input about what to have on the sign, where to get some materials for it. Um, um, they've, they've put input on that. Um, yeah, okay. so they're all, uh, um, there's um, one person that's very busy, um, 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 the family from Argentina. They're very busy. She hasn't been able to make any minutes, but uh, any meetings, but she has taken turns shoveling the snow off the ice rink. Okay. No, I just asked because, you know, we're, you know, normally a, a committee, you know, you know, upwards of, you know, eight to 10 members, you know, once you get over that, then, um, yeah. you know, starts to get pretty large, but, um, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, having the help of shoveling the ice rink has been, very helpful you know and and when we put the lining in you know um a lot of the committee me members helped with that uh, you know so that we don't always rely on the the um um fire department is very good at helping us with stuff but um we've been um um having more help from committee members and people so the fire department doesn't have to be um, helping us so much. All right. So I just need a motion to appoint David Fair to the Recreation Committee. So moved. Okay, moved by Paul. Lindley saying second, I think. <laughs> second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Looks good. Okay. <laughs> We have uh, planning commission. Did you want um, Therese to uh, uh, this person here for the planning commission? Have they been attending meetings or how, yep. how was that done? She attended one. She attended our last one and and then she emailed me the next day and said that she wanted to join and she came right in and picked up her copy of the town plan and the zoning bylaws and and um, it was great. <clears throat> so she's interested. So this would be nice. We would be. <laughs> I can't get ahead here, but um, it would be Adam Sappern, uh, Rick Benson, uh, Zoe and Kyle kind of are a one person, because right. you know, she's like his alternate and vice versa and myself. So 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it would be great. We would finally make it to five. <laughs> so are they? And we are they all three year terms or some of them all yes, three terms? All three year. They're just staggered because of who comes on when. So okay, I didn't know if there was staggering terms on that. So I would just need a motion to point there. Dave Eddie's waving us on. Dave's got a hand signal for a motion. Gene. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then we have our. Yeah. You got the big one. Our usual annual appointments. Yeah. <laughs> Usually okay. these are going. Once we have them all organized, they go really fast. So. And yeah. I had made it so that they were that the above is mm -hmm. going to point in one motion, all of them for one year. Yep. Um, so you. So yeah. and you and you can see from the packet that all these individuals have have said that they um, do want to do it for another year. <clears throat> um, so usually that's the the hardest part of this is reaching out, and making sure everybody wants to do it again before we reappoint. <clears throat> So unless we have uh, any questions in regards to that, I would entertain a motion to appoint all, all of the above for one year term. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Dave, second by Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then we have uh, some reappointments for the Conservation Commission, this is your last chance, Lisa, before we put it in there for another three years. So uh, Emily and Lisa for another three years with the Conservation Committee. I'll just need a motion to reappoint. So moved. Okay, moved by Paul. Second. Second by Gene, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Is that three years from now or three years from when our terms were <laughs> sort of really up, which was last year? <laughs> well, it must be no one told us last year. Well, I think that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think they'll make it from this year. It'll go from now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Obviously, people can resign any time. It's not like we're right, right. handcuffing you. <laughs> Can't resign ever. No resigning ever. No. So the That's second was Jean. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Paul and Jean. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Once you're in this club, you're in. There's no getting out. Right. Life sentence with no parole. That's right. <laughs> no compensation. Yep. All right. Uh, and then we had uh, two other reappointments for Penny and Keith for the DRB for one year terms. Move to reappoint. Motion from Dave. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Right. So we got through most of those appointments. And then next on the list is uh, we, uh, kind of continuing our discussion from last time in regards to the purchase of a mower. Right. So I just wanted to, the only question I received in advance was from Dave Eddy. So I just, um, I just wanted to reiterate a couple things um, and just remind you have an executive session, which is going to take a while too. So the, um, this is the base model commercial. This is, you know, we need a commercial mower. This is the lowest model that they have. And uh, Dave Eddy had a question about the, um, you know, the dump from seat collection system with the mid shoot blower. And this was actually, um, you know, Paul had addressed this at last meeting. He, he remind, you know, was telling everybody, remember that the John Deere, the bagger that it has is just this nylon bagger. And, and Paul's correct. There was no power basically to shoot it from the, the mower deck into these bags. And when the leaves and grass are wet, they get really clogged up. And, you know, Paul had made that point and he's right. Um, that is the collection system that's a step down from this is the bags and and we had someone I think Jean had asked if we needed to um, collect the grass and and Paul had you know in some cases really thick and Paul made the point that yeah it's nice to to be able to do that also too for us 
we mow over by the pool. So, you know, you don't want all that stuff tracking um, into the pool. And then that creates a big problem there, keeping the pool clean and the, all the, that that goes with it. So, um, so anyway, so I feel like it was pretty self-explanatory. I think it answered all the questions. It was a comparison and, and um, certainly did, I think, what we were looking for. So obviously we have the money. Um, because we sold the Ventrax, which was also the same deck size. And um, we have, um, you know, the money is, was set aside in the capital fund uh, to purchase a lawnmower. So this will hopefully um, get us where we need to be. So um, since I didn't get any questions, other questions, I'm assuming that hopefully this was good enough to answer everybody's questions. I also wanted to reiterate that this thing is going to last like 10 years. So if you look at the cost, it's not like this is a two year, you know, model. So I, I have a question on that particular point. Um, hopefully does, does John Deere have a recommended maintenance schedule of what the owner should be doing? Yes, actually there is. And, and, um, what we can do is what we will do actually is you can take it to John Deere. So for a couple hundred bucks at the end of each year, they do all the maintenance and they do everything that needs to happen. And, and it needs to be stored properly, which wasn't the case with equipment that you've had before. It wasn't stored properly. As I say, um, we had, we have some pieces that weren't taken care of even last year correctly. I have a concern about maintenance. So if these pieces that are relatively expensive last, Yep, I agree. And, um, you know, we in, in the past, um, things didn't get taken care of. You were right. And since then, we've had a change in staff. We've had a change in, you know, several things uh, happening now. So I'm my concern about that is not as um, much as it was, you know, before. But I do believe, you know, Richard is on top of his game and he knows he's going to have to make it last and that he'll keep it, you know, maintained. So. And obviously, I'll make sure that it is, you know, I, I don't want any surprises. This is going to be one of the first pieces of equipment I've purchased. And so want to make sure that it's taken care of and stored properly. I was angry when I found out a couple things that had happened uh, in the past. So we will be making sure that it's taken care of. But yes, there's a maintenance schedule and, and we'll adhere to it. Is there any sort of a system that can be put in place uh, so that we're uh, like an automatic beginning of season or end of season or so many miles or hours uh, where we're reminded to do the maintenance that we need to do? Well, I think that it will be, um, you know, at the end of the season, yeah, it's an automatic that it's going to have to go, you know, we'll just take it down to the John Deere dealer in, in Royalton and have it maintained, you know, before it goes away for the winter. That way everything's, you know, it's it's stored properly and, and maintained. So it's an automatic reminder at the end of each season will, you know, it will go down for its seasonal maintenance. That's one of the only way it's really going to last and, I mean, and to be stored properly. I think the question I had, Therese, um, well, my thoughts anyways, is, you know, I guess when I think of like lawnmower, I'm thinking like, you know, for this size, I'm thinking five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, you know, this just seems more, which isn't necessarily bad, but I, but now I start thinking of what else we need to get. And so it seems like, I mean, obviously we need a mowing system, but also it looked like we were struggling this winter with cleaning up the sidewalks when it came to uh, large events uh, because you know the the pl it, it just can't push snow once it gets to be you know like that big storm those couple of big storms so you know is you know in talking with Paul a little bit you know is this something that maybe I know. We don't want to waste any more time, but is this something maybe we could put in front of the equipment um, committee to maybe say, hey, there's, there's a, a tractor out there that we can both mow lawns and put a snowblower attachment on for the winter or something. You know what I mean? Like, is there a way we can get both of these? Because it does seem like we're going to be spending some, you know, some decent money and, you know, mm -hmm. we do the two birds with one stone type thing. Right. 
So the, the dump from C is the 4,500. That's what, you know, obviously the price is 12. So there's a big chunk of it right there. Uh, the equipment committee, I was really in my mind is for bigger equipment than a lawnmower. And um, we actually, I have a meeting schedule or I'm scheduling a meeting with them, not until for in April, because we're looking at the one ton is up because we have a capital equipment plan. And one of my questions for them is to deal with the, um, with the Kubota for, for snow plowing, because part of the problem there is there's no weight on the back. And so they need to fabricate something to put, which is they're, you know, all capable of doing to put some weight on the back of that, of the tractor. I know that the floor has some issues and we could certainly do some welding there, um, to, to deal with that. But I'm not sure if that's, that's certainly not on the capital, you know, equipment plan to get rid of right away. Um, because as you know, we have limited money. So I had met with the capital equipment committee a while ago and we had done a full on, you know, blown schedule for that. So, but what I realized after was that that was what had not been included. But I'm not sure, you know, sometimes the combination machinery doesn't work. I'd actually like to see them try to get a couple more years out of the Kubota. The, it's just not that old for them to be doing the snow plowing. If they can deal with um, putting the weight on the back, then, <clears throat> then they're good to go. And, um, and yes, will they eventually have to replace it? Sure. Um, but yeah. I'd like to push it out a ways. And right now we don't have a lawnmower. So I would just, I would just hate to spend $12,000 on, on a lawnmower. And then a year down the road, we're talking about how we're going to their sidewalks and needing another, whatever, 12,000. <laughs> Well, and you might. I mean, if you look right. at Randolph and look at surrounding towns, you know, that's, you know, they have, you know, sidewalk plows. They obviously have much more sidewalk than we do, but you can see them. It looks like a caterpillar because it has a sand or a salter on the back. And, you know, sometimes that's the problem is not always does, you know, I, the Ventrax wasn't the perfect machine. It was not for lawn mowing and snow plowing. It, it, it actually, I think you would have been happier with two different pieces of machinery. Um, so um, that's, you know, my two cents on it, but I do have, I'm trying to set up an equipment committee. We sent out an email for them today, but normally um, I wasn't thinking of bothering them with something so small. No. Well, I mean, I, and I agree like dollar figure wise, but I just didn't know, you know, those, those good minds in one, you know, one place and maybe they know of a piece of equipment that would serve both purposes, you know? Um, right. So, so I think I I mentioned about you know the equipment committee, but also looking at getting a tractor with a, a good sized deck on it that we could also put a snow blower and a sweeper attachment. Um, I ran one up in Randolph. It was a three forty five uh, John Deere. You'd probably want to get something a little bigger, but I ran it for ten years doing sidewalks and driveways with the snowblower, 48 inch snowblower attachment. And, um, you know, it ate, it just ate snow like crazy. And as long as you do the maintenance on any piece of equipment, you know, it lasted, I ran it for 10 years um, up there. So it's just, you know, just to throw it out. How much money is it for a tractor like that? I mean, we sold the Ventrax specifically for this purpose. So yep. how much um, was a tractor like that gonna? That uh, I don't know. You'd have to, you know, you'd have to talk to John Deere and get a price uh, right. for, for what it is. I have no idea. I'm just yeah. thinking it would be something that could be used and also maintained all year round, as opposed to being stored for six months uh, at a time. Uh, so just just another thing to think about. Right, we're, you know, and I get that it's uh, March 22nd, but, um, you know, I just, I, whatever, I can ask the equipment committee about it, I guess. Um, it, I did see, Therese, if we, if we don't get the mower done tonight, I did see a person in town that just had a bunch of baby mini goats so you could, oh, God. <laughs> could well, take care of some yeah, interim mowing needs. There you go. Well, that's, I'll just get Richard a push mower and we'll just call it a day. <laughs> well, I just, I, I guess I'm, I'm, you know, obviously want to get it so we can start mowing, but I just, you know, even if we had to spend, I don't know, even if we had to spend five to $10,000 more, but we could take care of both needs at the same time, you know, I 
think it would probably be better off for us to do that rather than. Right. I'm just trying to juggle it because but, I know, I mean, because we have worked out the capital equipment schedule. So, you know, money obviously is tight. That's, you know, where we're at. So, um, but I oh. have a meeting with them in April. So I. But what is the. I mean, what does the board feel this evening based upon the um, information that was given to us from Therese for this, this I, piece? I have, one, I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, do we have a mode of uh, moving this mower? Yes. Yep. We have a trailer, the same one that he had before. Right. But didn't, didn't they load that up with water and sewer stuff? No. Nope, that's a stick. That's a different trailer. Oh, okay. I mean, so that was one thing we talked about. I said, you better be able to get it around on the trailer you got because you're not getting both. <laughs> so Richard was good about it. So how, how does the board feel overall on, you know, do we want to go through and make a motion to purchase the piece that we have in our pack or would we like, you know, more information or different piece of equipment or you know what are we what are we thinking here i i'm uh going to go out on a limb here and agree with Therese that i don't think the proper sidewalk snow removal piece is also a lawnmower of any kind um and that sidewalk snow removal piece is going to be considerably more money so even though i may have started out with <laughs> disagreeing i i guess i'm gonna have to go with the mower for now okay um, gene lindley paul yeah i would i would agree with what dave's saying on this one of um you know i, I just feel like we went around the we went around it so many times with the ventrax of can it do both and it was never what we wanted it to be for the money that was that it took. And so I worry that if we hold off on a mower in hopes of getting something that will do both, then we're sort of shooting ourselves in the foot for this season. Um, whereas I like what Therese was saying about like, get the guys to do the work to make the Kubota usable for at least a couple more years, build up some money to then invest in something that will do the sidewalks that's appropriate for that. But really put it put that off for a couple of years and make them modify the piece of equipment that they have and take care of it a bit better from here. I have spoken to one of the equipment committee members about that, specifically the Kubota, and, and he had a couple ideas about it too. And when I meet with them, I'll make sure that we get it on the replacement schedule. Um, but his feeling was the same thing, was look, it's running and you know it wasn't taken care of. So, um, but they, he felt there was some ways we could get through it to, you know, and then the guys were good. I mean, it's Jeff Gilman, it's Bill Brainerd, it's still Mo. He agreed to stay on Ryan Slack and, and, um, you know, we'll put it on the equipment on the schedule for a, an equipment purchase. But I'm, I just think the two, the two pieces of equipment are once I just, I just think we're going to be unhappy with something, but I will certainly talk to them about it. I remember uh, thinking along the way, back in the days of VHS, uh, whether you wanted to get a VHS thing that was built into your TV, kind of get a twofer, or whether you wanted separate things. And the problem was that one part of it would go and then you had to rebuy the whole thing. Uh, so that part of part of me wants to to say well yeah but if you get a blower attachment on a it's a well so having that experience i want to i think i go with uh buying the separate units and i want to thank trees for getting a comparison mower uh look at i think that's helpful it helps us see where we are uh, yeah, I I would go with the way it is. So it looks like we have a enough for a vote here. So I'll just just would need a motion to authorize the purchase of the of mower as specified for the purchasing policy. So move. 
so we got uh, Dave moved it. Gene second. Aye. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Lindley. Okay. Whoo, Teresa lucked out. Under a $2.8 million water project, but I can't buy a $12,000 lawnmower. <laughs> that, that's, that sounds like our town meetings. We, oh, pass, we pass a $2 million right. budget, and then we can't pass a $500 item for the blind people. <laughs> I will, um, but I definitely will get information or speak to the equipment committee about I mean, it's on my list anyways, because we're going to be talking about a one, the one ton replacing that that's on the schedule. And when I had compared it to the depreciation schedule for the audit, I realized the lot, the sidewalk plot was missing, but I had had a nice conversation with Ryan Slack about some ideas to keep it going um, because we just need to keep it going right now. Well, we could do like um, mm -hmm. other cities do where everybody's responsible in front of their own residents. Yeah, that's interesting. Isn't I have it? a friend of mine who lives in Oregon and says, you know, it doesn't snow very often, but when it does, they have to clean up in front of their place. There's towns like that in Vermont, which is surprising, yeah. but there is. And, and if you don't get it done within X amount of time after it snows, they find fine. You. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Town manager's report. Um, let's see if I missed anything. Um, oh, I, so I did, I um, put in a list of things that I was currently working on. I thought that might be helpful. Um, <clears throat> excuse me for all of you to see that. Um, it's obviously just, it's a busy time of year right now. And um, so I'm trying to, you know, get some grants written and, you know, Chris has helped me, which I appreciate very much. and. Uh, Ryan Slack is helping me too as well, um, which is decent of him. And so I just wanted to give you a list, thought it might be helpful, let you know what I was up to. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that I hired uh, two people. So um, as you know, Dave Bergeron uh, was headed back to Pike, as was Hazen Sauls. And, um, but Hazen is going to come to work for the town of Bethel. And um, he's great. And Chris should get some sort of finder's fee, of course, because he's a great employee. And um, also, um, Gabe Feeney is going to come on. He graduates from BTC in May. So <clears throat> he was working there part time over the winter. He may be able to do a little bit before he graduates, but you know, the end of the semester, end of it is a little tight. So we'll see how that goes. But um, so it'll be nice. We'll have three people year round, and I'm very excited about that. Um, we'll still um, probably be Dave back in the winter to plow some more snow, but um, very excited about it. Um, the other thing is that I had three, uh, myself and Lucian Hinkle had met with three architects at the town garage and it was a no-go. Nobody's going to bid. They think that my our $600,000 price tag is a little too low. Um, it's also the time of year. I mean, construction costs are exorbitant right now so I, I talked to alan about it made a little bit of a list and i'm going to go back up maybe this week i think and meet with alan and maybe we'll just take a look at doing some general building maintenance on the existing portion of the building um and buys us a little time you know we don't have a million dollars and it concerns me but that architects <clears throat> just think that our number's too low. Obviously, I knew we had 100,000 in the capital building fund, but I figured I'd have to pay out the architect and some fees in advance and have someone evaluate. <clears throat> you know, they would have someone look at a mechanical engineer, an electrical engineer. So we're gonna have to regroup a little bit. So I talked to Alan and I will let you know what my game plan is, but right now- Would it be, would it be worth, Therese, with I mean, the money budgeted there? Um, you know, as we were expecting a, a, you know, a payment of some sort. So, I mean, would it be worth it at this point, maybe hire an architect or an engineer that could, you know, go out to the site and propose a, you know, with working with what we need, what, what a minimal structure that we, you know, even if they have to tear it down, you know, what it is and, mm -hmm. and then maybe get an estimate on it. And if they come back and say it's, $1.2 million. And I think that's something, a discussion we need to have. And 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it made me, I was thinking the other day about it and, <clears throat> you know, obviously we need to locate the septic system and check that out. It wouldn't be bad to have, you know, I don't know if the panel's big enough, you know, to, for us to take off the addition and then to, you know, basically double the size of that with the part that the road mm -hmm. crew built, you know, in years prior. So yeah, there's a couple things. I'm going to go up with Alan and, and just go through the building and have him point out the biggest things and then we'll figure it out. It's got to regroup. It's all life's all about plan B, I guess. So that's what we're with right now. And I, I think obviously disappointed, you know, we had felt like, you mm -hmm. know, we had done some rough estimates and also too, it's what we can afford, you know, that's right. and what the taxpayers can afford. So I will let you know what my next plan is, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. That's where mm -hmm. that project is, you know, on hold right now. I'll go meet with Alan and we'll see. I might get back in touch with um, our structural engineer too and see if he, you know, maybe he recommends somebody. And I know you and I had chatted that that there are a couple of uh, towns, you know, sort of in our area that have have built new facilities in the last couple of years, Chelsea being one of them that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we can go up and take a look at theirs and see how that compares to, you know, the needs of our town and, you know, maybe. Yeah. You know, get some design and cost estimates based off of that. Yeah, they were there a few. I mean, I think they built a few years ago and they were. Yeah, one point, but you know, fairly new, right? Two million. Yeah, so it's tough. So anyways, we'll regroup and see what's <clears throat> going to happen there. Um, With a question, a question about that. Uh, I know we want to keep taxes as low as possible, yep. uh, but how do we determine what what the community can afford uh i mean that's a that's that's a tricky question well in order to do it and do it right i mean that's the that's just a tricky question and i i don't have an answer other than we want to we want to keep taxes low but we maybe have to spend what we have to spend Right, exactly. I mean, I didn't pull the number out of the air. Uh, yeah, I mean, you do a little research. You go on and you say, okay, here's what our annual budget looks like. And if we like to keep around a 3% increase, what's a bond payment going to look like? Um, we did, I did some research, obviously quite a bit of research on if we reused a part of our facility, how much a square foot that would save us. Um, and I met with you know, a community member um, who used to do this line of work. So that's kind of the way you do it, Gene, is you kind of look and say, okay, here's our budget. Here's what do we foresee coming down the pike for um, maybe loan payments, things like that, taking also into consideration that we know we have a $2.8 million we're get, you know, project right now for water sewer. So, you know, water sewer rates are going to go up. So for people that pay taxes and water sewer, so it's really a balance. And I just tried to figure out what could keep us in that sweet spot of, you know, 3% or less. So um, that's kind of yeah. how you do it is taking a look and, at, you know, historical, what you can do and also what's coming out. So, and unfortunately there's never grant money for, you know, garages. There is for a salt shed, but not necessarily, you know, if you qualify, there's money for salt shed, but not usually town garages. So. So we were trying to do a nice responsible hybrid and basically re-evaluate the need of the existing structure and repurpose the steel and things like that. So I'm not completely convinced that we can't do that. We just maybe need to up our price tags. So. I'm just, I'm, yeah, just coming from the nonprofit world, a feasibility study on how much you could raise or how much you need to raise out of community is a different thing than a feasibility study based on the the project uh, itself. And um, I, I mean, in government and taxes and so on, I just don't know how that's how you do, how anyone determines yeah, what a community can can or would be willing to afford. And there's uh, that too. Exactly, Gene, is what they're willing to afford. That's a good point. So we kind of went through and looked at the garage and said, okay, you know, if we do this, yeah. this is going to buy us X amount of years. What do we think we'll have for equipment? We get everything under cover, mm -hmm. which has been obviously a, a concern of select board members. We have equipment that's outside. So 
yeah, sometimes it's it's a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of logic, a little bit of, you know, crystal ball in it and seeing. So it, it's, um, it's kind of the way it works. But so anyways, like I said, we're just going to regroup. So thanks. We'll regroup and figure it out. Yeah. And, and some of the things too is, you know, you may spend a little bit more now to build something, but, you know, interest rates are lower. You know, we don't know you know, a lot of the indicators point that interest rate rates are going to start to raise or rise over the next couple of years. So, yep. you know, I mean, if let's say the structure costs you an extra $400,000 right now, uh, you know, it might be cheaper than, than your rate going double, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, and it's hard to know because exactly what you're saying. I mean, you know, any building materials, I mean, like a sheet of plywood, 70 bucks now. So it, it's yeah. crazy to, you know, you've got the cost of building materials going up. Plus two people are busy mm -hmm. and because they're busy, they have a choice of projects. Right. Um, one of the architects said um, who we were hoping would bid um, was great, but he's, you know, he had a lot of repeat customers and he's like, look, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to do the project, but I need, I only have so much staff and these are repeat clients that are coming back. So, so yeah, the, here. we'll figure it out. A 50 year lifespan is better than a 25 year lifespan too. So, right, yep. you know, renovating may not, well, there are ways to offer it to the community that might but, yeah, absolutely. Well, anyway, so all right. We were lucky because when we passed the $2.8 million bond, that was great. We did a good educational push. And that's really a lot of it, you know, for that. And it's tough because infrastructure, town garages, they're not glamorous projects. You know, people are eh. <laughs> you know, so um, so it's so sometimes they can be tough sells, although we did great with the, the water project because it was such a need. And I think if people drove by the garage, they'd see that as well. So right. so I, you know. I'm just going to regroup. It's going to be all right. It's uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll have a better idea after I meet with Alan and go back through the building and see what we have for some more options. So okay. um, <clears throat> let's see. So I think we've covered everything else on uh, there. We're going to be writing, um, as I said in here, a paving grant for East Bethel. Um, we're going to end up putting out an RFP to repave the municipal parking lot which is not gonna be covered by a grant, that's gonna be out of our pockets. Um, one of the things that we need to talk about is, is um, and maybe we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting is Gilead. We're gonna leave the existing apron of Gilead concrete and then uh, put out a bid to reclaim the rest of Gilead where it's pavement. Uh, I need to get some measurements and see how far up it goes because it's it was never done properly. They just came in and dumped pavement on the existing road at that time. So what we, you know, talked about is just basically taking a big chunk of Gilead back to dirt because right now there's major potholes and you fill a pothole and then it, you know, up the road, it destabilizes and breaks open. And it just, it could be really expensive to go in and do that. And Gilead is not a class two road. So you're not going to get a paving grant for that. That's going to be all out of pocket. So Chris and I had talked about that uh, last week and, um, I think there could be some people that may be upset on Gilead because while, while be it, it's crappy and awful, it, it's pavement. So, um, but and, and, it's not and you know, it's, and you know, it's really bad when the paving guy says, let's take it to dirt. That's right. <laughs> so, That's right. Chris just wants to know, pave everything. So yeah, we want to paint everything, you know, black and asphalt from here to Timbuktu, but yeah, but so, um, so there's it, it's in. just, we'd be throwing money after bad money there, I think. Yeah. So, it's not gonna improve really anything other than it's well, gonna cost us money. And we have 20,000 for ditching. So I know there's a piece of it that it looks like maybe on one side of the road go in and shave off the berm with the grater, but then the other side we have to do some ditching. So I think right. what we're gonna end up doing is taking uh, some of the money uh, for hired services and ditching Gilead and then spending the rest on Camp Brook, which is an, obviously an ongoing issue, but yeah, that's what we're talking about doing. So is is uh, I'm going to go out and get some measurements this week for Gilead, and then and I talked to um, the Aldergettys, and we talked to a couple people on the road, and I'm sure people are going to be unhappy, but they're unhappy right now. Let me tell you that I get regular complaints about how bad Gilead is um, with potholes, and yeah. So 
We just can't keep doing what we did before, which is just dumping good money after bad by throwing skim coats on everything. So we'll see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to get some dimensions out there and then we will go from there. And then East Bethel will be nice. If we get the paving grant for East Bethel, that would be great because there's a couple of um, at least two, if not three culverts that have been um, on our survey from two rivers that were noted as poor. So I'd be able to get those replaced to do some ditching out there, pave it, and we wouldn't have to really worry about it for about 10 years. So, which would be nice or longer, but at least East Bethel would be nice. <laughs> Check. And uh, so that would be good. So that's kind of a, just a snapshot of a little bit of stuff that I'm dealing with. And um, I think I'm nice. good, Chris. And we had the meeting minutes from the 8th of March. Mm -hmm. Unless anybody has any amendments to it, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written. So moved. So got move. Second, second, Lindley. Okay, all in favor? Aye. I like what you did there, Paul. You you let Lisa sweat it just for a couple of seconds while you waited to make that motion. I'm saving them up. <laughs> I could I could feel the suspense. It was it was there. I, all right. And then there was quite a bit of different um, uh, communications in our packet. Um, um, not just, um, you know, the information that um, Therese had provided us there with some open meeting law um, pieces, but there was Conservation Commission, Energy, uh, Equity and Inclusion Committee. So I don't think, I think those were all the ones that I had saw in there. Oh, they're planning, planning commission as well. And we have another planning commission meeting this Thursday, so. Okay. Um, yeah, so I just tried to give you some information about the meeting law. I know that was a question about attending equity and inclusion committee and some other things. So um, that was all in there. Hope that was helpful to you all. Uh, you know, Chris, I know one of the other things that we had talked about and I just realized was um, we talked about maybe starting um, in May and uh, meeting in person again at the town hall. So currently, um, you know what they're obviously everybody's happy because now they've started the go uh, governor has issued uh, the remaining vaccine eligibility timeline and um and what now right and if we were to go back in may um hopefully by then anybody who wanted to be vaccinated would be vaccinated um we obviously at the town hall we can, you know, it's currently the rules like one person per 100 square feet. And we certainly know we have the ability to social distance there. We can have windows open, and, um, et cetera. So it would be nice, um, you know, to think about, keep that in mind that hopefully that first meeting in May, we'll be able to start meeting in person again at, at the town hall. So. All right. So we'll just kind of see how it progresses through mm -hmm. April. We'll know better. Okay. Any other business to come before the board before we enter into executive session? Just a quick thing. So I spoke with um, Penny Griffin is going to attend the BRTS board meeting this Wednesday, just as uh, see if she's interested in being on the board. And I explained to her that if she is, she'll, submit her name to Therese to give to us for our next meeting. So just heads up on that. And I think Lily is also going to attend the meeting. So yeah, hopefully at least one of them will pan out. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Dave and oh. I will play rock, paper, scissors for who gets to step down. You or go. you can bring four members this time. That's right. <laughs> right, we can have four members. Right? <laughs> well, is there, I don't think there's anything, obviously her son works at the transfer station. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. I don't think there's anything in the inner local though that would present prevent that. I think it's just no. you guys. Doesn't say somebody. It. The only mm -hmm. thing you might have to do is recuse yourself if there's any disciplinary or financial discussion right. about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think right now, um, you know, usually that's under the, um, you know, obviously he works for Jen, so he works under the manager. So 
Right. right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think so. I was rereading the Andrew Local recently. I didn't see it. So. Yeah, and I I actually had talked to Penny about that mm -hmm. and just kind of brought it up as a like this might be a point of concern, and she acknowledged exactly what Dave said of like if there's ever any discussion that involved her son, she would just recuse herself. Yeah. Right. Oh, Brian's great. He's 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 good. He's a great worker, and he's got a great sense of humor. So. He's probably the person, perfect person to work down there. <laughs> well, at least we won't have to warn a select board meeting to have our members. Of oh, I know. Crazy. <laughs> well, couldn't that potentially swing the vote, though, if she had to recuse herself? Sure. Yeah, yeah but if there was a, well, if there was a big disagreement, yeah, but hopefully yeah. there will be you know, more unity on that board, Paul. <laughs> I'm, I'm, st I'm not saying, I'm not uh, saying it's not a good idea. Yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, yeah. But you're right. Yes, it would. Absolutely. If they were, um, yep, it could. Absolutely. If there was, you know, three Bethel against three Royalton, sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, Chris, the, the only other thing I wanted to mention was, uh, and I, you've probably seen this, but um, there's a new grant program that is out there for sole proprietors uh, to take part in, and it's being administered through Two Rivers. And I, you may have seen it on Facebook, um, a couple of postings. Uh, it's a grant program. You have to meet certain uh, income criteria and whatnot. Uh, but I think Teresa has the information. You could also contact me if you know of anybody who has questions about it. Um, but it's, a, it's a, a large grant program. And uh, it's the second phase. They actually had another uh, series of grant, this same grant program back, oh, I think in the spring or, or summertime um, that they had several uh, companies in, in our county uh, become eligible for, for uh, grant support for their sole proprietor businesses. Hmm. So just wanted to throw that out there. And I did put it, um, we'd got it last week as well. So I did have Kelly put it out on, um, the, on front porch or no Facebook and our website. And also, uh, she'd sent it to Cindy, but of course, Cindy already had it. So they mm -hmm. put it out on their Bethel strong, um, we you know website, which was great. So, um, so we, we do always, you know, when we get these grants or different things, we do try to disperse them and but yeah, Cindy was all over it. <laughs> good all right anything else oh, Therese you want to read us into executive session means you got quite the paragraph there well you know we discussed this um, on the prior meeting was when you go into when you go into executive session to discuss certain things to, uh, the League of Cities and Towns always recommends that you have this pre-conversation about, um, you know, what's public knowledge or what's, you know, why are you going to go into executive session to discuss something? So you sometimes you have to kind of hash out as much as you can in open session before you go in. So it's, it's kind of tricky. Um, mm. But uh, so anyways, what I wrote here was we're going to go into executive session to discuss the current interlocal contract for operation of the Bethel Royalton Solid Waste Management Facility for 1 BSA 313A1. This is eligible for discussion in executive session as it is the start of a possible contract negotiation and the town of Bethel does not wish to disclose its negotiation strategy and premature general public knowledge puts us at a disadvantage. So... Um, that's the motion would be to enter executive session to discuss the town's current contract with the town of Royalton for joint operation of the transfer station. So it's a lot, but so moved. <laughs> and after all that, all Lindley has to say is okay. second. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Three makes our job easy. So we will not be. <laughs> Won't be making any decisions, so it won't be anything in public afterwards. So, right, right. Bye, Lisa. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for coming this evening. We did invite Therese to stay, right? Yeah. 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 Have a good night, everyone.
Bye, guys.